Hello and welcome back and that is right today I want to talk about two WD Black SSDs that although they look at least by their retail packaging exceedingly similar actually have a vast amount of differences between them and when you're thinking about buying an upgrade for your laptop for your you know gaming rig just something for business really and you've already kind of committed that you're going to buy a Western Digital Drive in PCIe Gen 4 you would be forgiven for wondering why this is so much more expensive than this and in today's video we're going to break down the main differences between these two we're going to talk a little bit about performance talk a little bit about durability but ultimately help you understand why when you're buying one over t'other whether you're going to be getting the thing that you actually need so first and foremost let's talk about you know what the main reason you probably come to this video is and that's the price difference because although I've only got two SSDs here on the table it's worth highlighting that there's actually a kind of third price difference between these two so the newest release of all of these um, SSDs arguably is the most affordable the SN7700 arriving at around 20 to 30 percent lower in price than that of the WD Black SN850 already makes you wonder what could be so different about these two and then you notice that in some retailers this SSD is even more expensive because it arrives looking like this with their own proprietary heatsink a really nice SSD heatsink that arrives pre-applied from WD there I mean again when you look at the price difference Arguably, even at individual storage tiers, with this one arriving as low as 250 gig, but 500 gig, 1 TB, and 2 TB being available across the range, that price difference is very, very affecting. But what are you getting for that money? Let's actually drill down into the hardware specifications because these are in house SSDs, which is for a lot of people that like to buy, buy proprietary, can be very, you know, very compelling. What I mean by that is. WD, again, has lots of subsidiaries and a lot of the work that goes into their SSDs when it comes to the controller, which is the brains, the CPU, if you will, when it comes to the NAND, the NAND, of course, on board being where your data lives, and even memory, something, a very important point we're going to talk about, it's all in-house, either using, using WD's proprietary first-party uh, controllers or utilizing things like the Coaxia brand underneath them or SanDisk to provide the additional components, which again are WD subsidiaries. Now, subsidiaries. Now, both of these are using in house controllers, but it has to be said the controller, although older by a year and a half to two years, depending on when you're watching this, on the WD Black SN850, is the superior of the two, allowing the performance of up to and above 7,000 megabytes per second. Now, to put that into perspective, PCIe Gen 4 times 4 allows up to a potential maximum of 8,000 megabytes per second. That is your, your freeway, that is your road, that is the full pipeline, the bandwidth. And the controller inside this SSD can allow up to, again, around 7,000 megabytes. So that's a large degree of filling of that bandwidth pipe there. Now, again, we are talking sequential performance, which doesn't necessarily indicate day-to-day -day utility, but still, in terms of write, uh, sorry, read activity, which is accessing the contents of the drive, that's significantly higher. Now, the SN7700, on the other hand, caps out at 5,150. Again, it fluctuates depending on the power of your system and sustained performance, something we'll touch on later. But again, that is utilizing less of the maximum potential bandwidth possible. And a big part of that, although it's not the only part, is to do with the controller inside, which is a, co um, a um, uh, SanDisk internal controller doing all of that work there. Now, alongside that, there's another key component in the architecture of these drives which needs to get some attention and that is the NAND. The NAND is the chips on board an SSD where the data lives. Now depending on the capacity of the drive you're looking at and uh, the quality of the NAND that means that the, the frequency of chips on the board there will be greater. Now they both take advantage of 3D TLC NAND from Coaxia. However, after that, things do differ quite wildly. Now, if we look at the newer SSD, this newer SSD in 1TB arrives with a single module of NAND there. It is a SanDisk 1TB module. It's that big chunky one at the bottom there. And that's a 112 layer coaxia 
NAND component, 3D TLC NAND. Now, on the one hand, that's nice distribution. There are no chips on the base. All of the data there, you haven't got multiple chips to worry about. It's all on one. But in reality, that can be quite detrimental because the more NAND chips that you spread the data onto, that can actually increase performance as multiple drives are being accessed at once. Now, you need a good controller in order to manage that, hence the better controller on this one. And when we look at the 1TB on the WD Black SN850, even that's the older one, and it actually has slightly lower NAND layers at 96 layers rather than the 112 on that one, and distributes the NAND more evenly. In the case of this 1TB, there are two SanDisk, I'm sorry, I, I believe SanDisk, 512 gigabyte NAND modules in there, allowing two NAND chips to be read from simultaneously there, which can make a big difference in terms of overall performance, which then begs the question, why on the SN7700 is there only the one NAND chip? Chip, NAND chip. Now, let's break down into that. First and foremost, it's to do with affordability and efficiency. This is a drive that is designed to lower um, performance um, requirements. It is an SSD that is designed to get you know, less hot overall to get that temperature a little lower. But what you may have also noticed there in the middle, when we angle it down, is there are no more chips. There's your controller, you've got a little power management chip, and you've got the NAND. There's no memory. Another big com component for a number of SSD development tools, particularly in NVMe, to hit that 7,000 megs, not just that, and the, all the older tiers before it, memory or DRAM or SD RAM, it changes hands by a number of different names, works in conjunction with the CPU and the NAND to buffer and allow and manage and assist performance all the way through, just like memory does on your computer, random access memory. It's basically hands to deal with a certain task or multiple tasks at any given time. Now, the WD Black scales the DDR4 memory inside with one gig of memory with the one TB, two gig of memory with the two TB, and that memory also is what allows this SSD to hit that 7,000 megs in sequential, remember that, sequential read. Whereas this one takes advantage of a system known as host memory buffering, HMB. Now, what that is, is it works in conjunction with the system it's inside to allocate a little bit of the memory inside the host computer to assist that SSD. Not a vast amount, but just a little bit of memory there to help with the system. Now, on the one hand, that aids um, power efficiency to a high degree. Two, it allows this uh, SSD, which is already only needing to do, you know, manufacture a single NAND chip, to be even more cost efficient and affordable, hence the lower price tag. However, utilizing onboard memory of the host system isn't ideal. First and foremost, if you are using a system that doesn't allow that, or at least has a lower uh, competency for that, such as utilizing that in a closed system like the PS5, you're not going to get the performance that this SSD is capable of. The second thing to bear in mind there is if you are utilizing the host system memory and you've only got a small portion of it, more sustained activities and larger activities when you engage with the SSD are going to oversaturate and therefore you're going to see performance on a drive like this in sustained activity so that's when you're not giving the ssd time to flush the cache and to empty out and basically allow itself to deal with fresh tasks with that on board uh, the on system memory the result is you get a huge bottleneck hence why you see reports of some ssds that do not arrive with dram struggling with larger ongoing tasks so that's why that performance is lower than it is. And that gets reflected when we look at the IOPS. Now, 4K IOPS, unlike the sequential performance that we've talked about to this point, which is large, consistent, back-to-back -back data transition, 4K random IOPS is as the data, as the name suggests. 4K, a teeny tiny amount of data randomly hit. Now, 
between these two, you'll, it will come as no surprise that the WD Black SN850, although older, has better resources on hand and its IOPS ratings are way, way higher and not just a bit either. To put that into perspective, the SN750 in its largest capacity um, provides, actually even at the 1TB, let's focus on the 1TB, provides up to 740,000 individual uh, 4K read 4K IOPS and in write up to 800,000. Those are good numbers. Let's not begrudge them that. For a DRAMless SSD, those are still great numbers, but they pale in comparison to the 1 million read write that this SSD here that's more expensive but is better at handling. So, Again, unsurprisingly, the performance of the more expensive, although older, SSD is certainly higher there. Now, if we talk about durability, that is one area between these two where we can see a little bit more parity. Because between the two of them, the uh, terabytes written is actually quite similar. Terabytes written um, is effectively the amount of data that can be written to an SSD annually to maintain and live within the um, manufacturer's promise of support and warranty there. But I like to use a DWPD, drive rights per day, presented as a decimal place. These SSDs live between 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 drive rights per day. That means you can write the full capacity up to about 0 0.3. So that's 300 gig on the terabyte per day. And these are both one terabyte drives. Now, it's a little bit, of back and forth there between 0 0.33 and 0 0.4 but ultimately between them there's such a small margin of difference between them in terms of durability that we can't really pick one over the other but I will add between the two of them the fact that they've got the same um, durability yet this one writes much 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 faster may make all the difference to a number of you depending on your workload and how much you're intending to stress this SSD per day. I think the biggest defining difference between these two SSDs and their architecture, it, it is the performance, but mainly it's that lack of memory. This is designed with a different end user. This is designed with an end user who is not a power user, who is not looking or at least doesn't even have the CPU memory and the rest of their system architecture to actually hit 7000 in the first place. They're looking for a PCIe Gen 4 SSD that can do the job, do a very good job of saturating a decent amount of the PCIe Gen 4 architecture and aren't looking to do anything too groundbreaking there. The middle of the road buyer. Whereas the SN850, again, or well that's the older of the two, present a much higher performance value and sustained activity that I think a lot of power users are going to be drawn to. But just remember, when you're looking at this SSD, you're paying extra for that. So that performance, the low latency, and the overall better package arrives at a higher price, and that's what you have to bear in mind. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the SN7700 versus that of the SN852 WD Black SSDs. Hopefully, the written article that goes into a lot more detail and a lot of spec sheets is below over on NAS Compares. Otherwise, it should be with you soon. Thank you so much for watching. If you are wondering about the right SSD to buy, use the free advice section over on NAS Compares. It's right there in the comments. Genuinely free. It's manned by me and Eddie, the web guy. It might take us an extra day or so to answer your inquiry. We're humans, we've got lives, but it's not done for profit. We don't charge anything, don't give us stuff about your email, not going to do anything with it. There's donate buttons, use them, ignore them, it's up to you. But otherwise, click like if you enjoyed the video, it helps me make each video better than the last, and subscribe to learn more about this subject. I will see you next time.